I greet you in Jesus' precious name. It's a beautiful day on the farm. The horses are just in front of me there. They're just grazing quietly. You can see that the little ponds here are like glass. There's not a breath of air. But it's a lovely cool day, maybe 20 degrees here in South Africa. And I've got a special message for you today. So sit back, enjoy that cup of tea, that cup of coffee, and listen to the Word of God. I've called this program, He Hears Our Prayers. We go to the first book of John, right at the back of the Bible, near the book of Revelation, chapter 5, and I'm reading verses 14 and verse 15. Now this is the confidence, confidence, that we have in Him, in Jesus. That if we ask anything according to His will, not just anything, according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Isn't that beautiful? That's the confidence we have. The confidence we have is that the Lord listens to our prayers. Don't try and tell Him what is good for you or for me. He knows already what is good for us. We need to pray accordingly. You see, that relationship you are having at the moment, take it to the Lord and leave it at the foot of the cross. He will undertake. Don't tell Him how you want the relationship to work out. Just say, Lord, I've got a problem here with, between my wife and myself, between my girlfriend and myself, between my brother and myself, between my business partner and myself. Please help me, Lord. That's all you've got to say. He will do it for you. He knows what's good for you. That business deal. Put it at the foot of the cross. You know, I remember many, many years ago when I had a big 20-ton Mercedes-Benz truck with a big yellow trailer called the Seed Sower. And we took this truck right into the heart of Central Africa. And in those days, the early days, there were no cell phones. Cell phones were not invented. Well, they definitely weren't in Africa anyway. And we were not in a position to be able to buy a satellite telephone in those days. And so I would go in that seed sower and I would preach the gospel for up to six weeks. I would be away from home. That's traveling time up into Africa, traveling time back. We're talking thousands of kilometers across some of the biggest rivers in the world. Two of them. One was the Limpopo, the other one was the Zambezi. And then we had the Kofui River and many others. I used to get very lonely. Not that there was no people. There were thousands of people. But I was on my own. My family weren't with me. I had some good men with me, but I used to get lonely. And then, the, you know how the devil works? He starts telling you stories. Oh, well, your family's on their own. You can't even get back to Shalom Farm if you needed to. First of all, they don't know where you are. They can't contact you. And it, that talking would start. And then I would pray. And I say, Lord, please, undertake. And I'll never forget the one day we were going through a little village. And there was a United Nations office or some NGO of some Christian organization. I went into that little office and there was a lovely young Zambian lady sitting there. And I heard music, Christian music playing. And I think I started to weep. I said, I need to get hold of my wife. And she said, no problem. I can sort that out for you. So we got a contact. And I picked up the phone and I heard Jill's voice, my wife's voice. Hello, Angus. Well, folks, that was it. That's all I needed to hear. Are you okay? We're all fine. We're praying for you. We love you. And that was the end of the phone call. That kept me going. Now, you and I need to do the same thing. We need to pray and then leave it in God's hands and He'll do the rest. God bless you and goodbye.